Hello everyone and welcome back to Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Today we're going to look at all things Balmoral. So what can we find out about this fabulous place? Let us see now. So where is it located? Balmoral is a 50,000 acre property located in Kayon Gorms National Park in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. 500 miles, about a nine mile drive north of London. So I apologize if I pronounce some words uh, improperly. Uh, I try to remember how to say it, but sometimes it's hard to get it right. <laughs> but well, on, on with the show here. <laughs> Small but pretty, those were the words of Queen Victoria, used to describe the house where she and Albert first visited in 1848. Victoria found the area peaceful while Albert felt the rolling hills reminded of him of his homeland in Germany. According to mentalfloss.com, it's mostly made up of moorland and and rocky alpine-like landscapes. There are mountains, rivers, lochs, valleys, grouse moors, and gardens throughout. Balmoral is also a fully functional working estate that's active in farming and wood production. 3,000 acres of land is dedicated to forestry, yielding 10,000 tons of wood every year. That's a lot of, a lot of wood. <laughs> so there's plenty of animals there, deer, grouse, red squirrels, Scottish wildcats, but ptarmigans, ospreys, and golden eagles. So what is the history of the property? Okay, before it became an English royal family favorite place, it was a favorite of the Scottish elite. The King of Scots, King Robert II, owned a hunting cottage in the area in the late 14th century. Sir William Drummond built the first castle on the grounds in 1390, and then the estate was passed down to many prominent members of Scottish aristocracy, including the son of the first Earl of Huntley, Alexander Gordon, then James Duff, 2nd Earl Fife, and Sir Robert Gordon. Balmoral entered the British family in 1852 when Queen Victoria and Prince Albert purchased the estate. The two had spent years renting the castle and fell in love with the landscape, and they recreated the castle to fit their needs, and they hired a Scottish architect to do it. After they did, it was the, the original castle was torn down. See, at this time, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert had uh, nine children, so they needed a big place to live. <laughs> so Balmoral and private property of the royals. The property then went to his heir, King Edward VIII, who abdicated the throne to uh, marry American divorcee Wallace Simpson. His brother, George VI, became king and passed the ownership of Balmoral to his daughter and heir, Queen Elizabeth II. The queen never lived at Balmoral permanently, but it was, it was one of her main residences. She spent at least three months of the year there, typically beginning in August. And the place now belongs to King Charles III. So the Grand Castle includes 52 bedrooms, a number of reception halls, and a swimming pool. But there's much more than just the main castle. The estate features 150 other buildings and homes, including Burke Hall, the summer residence of King Charles III and wife Camilla, as well as uh, Craigowen Lodge and other cottages, some of which are open for the public to rent. So this is like a summer camp for the royals. It's a perfect getaway for the royal family, a place to enjoy nature and get some fresh air. Uh, Queen Elizabeth loved to have picnics, ride her horses, and drive her Range Rover. So they would do, also do stalking, deer, cycling, and grouse shooting, and they would hike and take long walks. Prince Philip was the grill master and did the cooking there, and it was also the place where Prince Charles and Princess Diana had their honeymoon. And the architecture is Scottish baronial style. It is a Gothic revival building, and the current castle was completed in 1856 with local granite. Well, the interior is a bit of a mystery, according to mentalfloss.com. Some release photos give us a glimpse of the castle's aesthetic. The rooms seem to be the style of a traditional Scottish estate, boasting marble fireplaces topped by gilded mirrors, upholstery with nature motifs, fine wooden furniture, and shelves full of leather-bound books. Green hues, tartan patterns, and honey motifs are also featured predominantly. The ballroom is more well-known because it's open for public visits. So this grand ballroom features Scottish Highland-inspired details, with dark wood beams on the ceiling, intricate woodwork on the walls, large chandeliers and candelabras. So the gardens are beautiful. There's three acres of gardens there, 
and it includes a variety of gardens, greenhouses, and a conservatory. And there have been many changes made through the years. So Prince Philip also made additions to the famous gardens. He added the large kitchen garden, which provides fruits and vegetables and herbs, as well as additional walking paths and a water garden. So it takes a lot of people to keep it running. Uh, the estate employs 45 full-time staff members and 150 seasonal staffers. And part of the estate's missions include staying closely integrated with the land and with the local community. So this provides many jobs for people who live in the region. So that's a great thing. And then there are sp certain times that the public can visit. It's open to the public from April to July. It sometimes goes outside those months if the royal family isn't there. According to mentalfloss.com, when Bamoral opens his uh, doors to the public, people have access to the ca castle grounds, garden, special exhibits, gift shop, and coffee shop. The only interior room the public can view is the ballroom. And during these months, Balmoral's park rangers also offer two-hour guided tours around the estate. There are several hikes that can be done year-round, depending on the weather, in the nearby Kayon Gorham National Park. And you can hear Scottish bagpipers. People inside the castle can hear the bagpipes. At this time, folk songs are heard, and an impromptu stage is an area under the windows of the Queen's room. Other facts, malt whiskey, the royal Loch Nagar single malt, is distilled there. There's more than 2,000 red deer thought to live on the estate. And a pyramid-shaped kaon was built on the estate after the death of Prince Albert to act as a memorial. So uh, there are more than just one kaon at Memorial. According to Wikipedia, there are 16 stone kaons on the Balmoral Estate in Deeside, Scotland, including a single kaon on the adjoining Burke Hall Estate. The kaons commemorate the members of the British royal family and events in their lives. The majority of the kaons were erected by Queen Victoria. And then a lot of them are kaons that commemorate the marriages of Victoria's children. And the Duchess of Kent's kaon, and this was Queen Victoria's mother, is uh, there also. The largest kaon was erected by Victoria in memory of her husband, Prince Albert, after his death in 1861. And then there was a kaon to commemorate John Brown, and it was erected by Victoria after Brown's death. It was later removed at the behest of Edward VII, who disliked Brown, and later replaced with his statue. While the majority of the kaons were established during the time of Queen Victoria, two kaons were constructed to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Elizabeth II in 2012. Sixty stones, one for each year of Elizabeth's reign, were laid in the village of Ballater with a main stone from a quarry in Inver. A second kaon was erected on the Balmoral Estate within the grounds and unveiled, unveiled by the Queen on the 8th of August 2012, having been under construction since May. Well, Balmoral was always a treasure getaway for the royal family, and it all began with Prince Albert and Queen Victoria. Queen Elizabeth loved every moment she spent there and always looked forward to returning there. She loved it so much she insisted she be able to go there when the summer approached, knowing that she would never be going back to Windsor Castle or Buckingham Palace. She wanted to pass away there. It was there that she could be free from all the stresses of her life, her job, and just enjoy the nature and time with her family so no one could blame her for wanting to be there as she had always been. It was a place she loved. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, click on the notification bell, and you'll be able to, to watch a new video when it's released. I hope everybody's been having a good day, and tune in again soon for another episode of Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Thank you. Bye.